Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show, Oscar Swain. Yes, Woo. we're talking about Randy. <laughs> He's here again, coaching uh, with Relevance. Good to, He's good to see you. Good to be here. Always man. to have you. He's here bringing yep. uh, freedom to potential and so many leaders to the foreground with uh, him helping you grow uh, as a Marshall Goldsmith uh, certified coach. I must bring that up. Uh, coaching no, for Relevance.com. You. <laughs> you can find him. Randy, tell us a little bit about your services, and uh, then we'll talk a little bit about this fun because a lot of us are dysfunctional. No one's perfect, but That's how that true. correlates in the leadership <laughs> department for today. We'll do that. And um, yeah, but you know, mo- a lot of my background, you can kind of see it on the banner up here. A lot of mm-hmm. my background has uh, been flying jets and um, uh, all that, but uh, I've uh, been along the journey. You know, guess what? When you're talking about pilots, it's very much like being a leader in any area of today's world where things are not always predictable. You know, not everything is just purely academic. And can you really experience true success in your team in yeah. that kind of environment? And that's that's what that kind of aspect and how you bring that out of your people in successful ways. Uh, that's kind of what I uh, focus on in coaching. And uh, and you know, I still train a lot of jet pilots and a lot of uh, flight crews. And guess what? I bring that and I bring the neuroscience aspect to it. Because uh, as as I think you know now, I'm not. Yeah. I'm also a uh, uh, master level neuroplastician with Institute for Organizational Neuroscience over in Europe, yeah. and uh, and my auto autobiography was just made public last week on Amazon. So it's uh, so now I'm officially an author, I guess. But it's uh, uh, it's a lot of fun with what I bring. But for me, it's not about myself. It's it's about bringing value to other people so they can reach the uh the the success that they would have never imagined possibly and so that's uh that's my passion and um that's what i do well thank you and congratulations how has it been so far my goodness gosh <laughs> i was i was with you for a long time and you were still going to school uh, to get your degree uh i mean uh-huh. you're like umpteenth degree that was last yep. year and then now here you are as an author add another title to the list this is crazy in a good yeah, way yeah yeah it, it it is and i just uh, uh as as people know i think i shared this with you uh joe one time that uh when you look at my autobiography and all even if it's 20 years after I take my last breath and I'm no longer here, I don't mind if people don't remember my name. I don't necessarily mind if they're not even talking about me. What I hope is that they gain one insight that they remember there was this dude a long time ago and uh, a, an insight was brought out and I applied it to my life. And man, it's just made a big difference. And and that's, you know, that's what I hope. I care about the, the impact and the... Uh, um, the uh, the benefit of just the experience that people have had with me so that in uh, some ways they are achieving things they wouldn't have thought of. They're, they're catching a vision that they didn't ever think they would have before. And so, and I know what it's like to live your dreams because I've done that. And, uh, you know, and uh, so, yeah, it's been, uh, been kind of amazing. Oh, my goodness. Well, thank you. Exciting to have you back here today. And what is this about dysfunction that you wanted to kind of dive into a little bit for us? Well, let's let's talk about that just for a second, because it's going <clears> to <throat> excuse me. It's going to bring out a, a, a central point that a lot of people in today's world don't really think about so much. And you find this in a lot of arenas, if you will, uh, uh, I mean, as much as I hate to say it, sometimes you see it in faith-based arenas. You see it in business. You see it in teams. You see it on sports teams and things of that nature. And and what's amazing is it's just this aspect about when you're talking about making the emotions happen in your people, how are you really doing that in a effective and successful way? And where is it originating it within them? Because as you know, there's a lot of people today that you see, they, they just want to fire up the emotions in their people, you know, kind of thing. And, and the problem with that is, and this is what a lot of people don't really truly understand, but when you're totally firing up the emotions in, in, in people on your team, whether it's an athletic team, whether it's a 
you know, anything, you know, kind of thing, whether it's your business or whatever. When you're trying to fire up the emotions, there's a lot of people that think in today's society, and this is t- this is totally incorrect. A lot of people think that if I fire up their emotions, man, they'll get past it. Well, you know what? Not necessarily, because you know mm-hmm. what? The fact is, if the uh, if the emotions are fired up sort of externally like this, then guess what? When there's a complex, very high risk challenge that comes on scene and things don't go just the way they wanted it to mm-hmm. at the beginning, everything within them can collapse because the, 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 the emotions were just there from external. But what people, you got to understand that when you're talking about neuroscience, you know, your brain releases... Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 you know, chemicals with neurotransmitters for oxytocin, norepinephrine, all this sort of stuff, you know, kind of thing. And not going to go into all of that today, but the bottom line is what you got to realize is that when people, is it good sometimes for them to have a degree of emotion of where they're wanting to go as a team? And what's, how can I help get us there as a team? Yes, absolutely. But you don't just fire that up externally. What happens is when your brain gets a sense of, okay, you know what, this is where we're going. Boy, you know what, mm-hmm. golly, this is the benefit for us if we do this, if we get it done. Wow, you know what, yeah, let's do this, yeah. you know, kind of thing. You know, it the 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 emotion should come from their vision, from their sense of awareness, from their experience. And all of that, and there should yep. be a degree of excitement for when they're taking on a challenge. But that excitement is not something that's generated externally. And and so a lot of times if you're a leader and you're trying to get your team ready for a challenging situation or scenario like that, a lot of times you got to ask some of those questions that help them, you know, uh, you know, process the awareness in your frontal lobe, process the awareness of of what are we doing? What's the value of that? Oh, wow. You know what? Oh, yeah. You know what? This is some of the risk that can come on scene. This is what we got to watch out for. Yeah. And if this comes on scene, what are we going to do? You know, kind of thing and all that. And then once they get a clear picture of that, a lot of times their brain will release mm-hmm. the chemicals, which release those kind of uh, uh uh, aspects of, of the, uh, the stuff. So the bottom line is, and this is something that a lot of people in today's environment don't fully understand. If you understand the neuroscience aspect, you have a much clearer picture of that. But the those emotions and those emotional responses and interactions don't come from the outside and make it effectively. What a lot of people try to do is when they're talking to them, they fire them up for two reasons, one of which is, mm-hmm. you know, they, they think and have, have been led to believe that that's how you get somebody to success. Well, it isn't. The other thing on that is a lot of people do that and they go in and try to fire up the emotions because it puts them in charge of you. Because you know what? As you probably know, Jill, as we all do, the, if you think back on times in our life when we were very emotionally driven, guess what? When things didn't just go right, we got all sorts of, oh, God, you know, this is not going to work. This is ridiculous. They're just not doing this. You know, that doesn't lead to success. No. You know, and, and, and so when you get somebody who's just trying to externally fire up the emotions for you, they are showing you their lack of understanding about true leadership and about how you really make this happen. And how you don't get in the way. Because I'll tell you, if you fire up somebody's emotions, everybody thinks that, you know, three minutes after they leave the room, boy, they're just going. When really they're walking down the hall going, yeah. okay, I guess, you know, kind of thing. And But the other thing about it is if you're focusing on just that ability of yours to try to fire up their emotions, what you don't realize is they're becoming so dependent on the emotions that they're throwing their brain into the trash can Uh. and they're not processing and they're not catching the visual of unique factors that come on the scene and 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 things of that nature and so it's it's really key that that i that i want to get across to people in this particular 
uh, session that, you know, when you're talking about leading your team in a challenging environment, that uh, guess what? Not everything is unpredictable. Are the emotions okay? Yeah, but not from your initiating them. It comes from you helping them process and experience and sense and catch a vision of the real successful outcome Mm -hmm. and what this looks like. And they catch a vision a little bit about when unexpected factors come on, how are we going to handle that? How are we going to do? How are we going to get past that? How are we going to make sure it doesn't shoot us down, you know, kind of thing. And, and then once they get that picture and also it's synergistic within the team, guess what? Their heart can be going, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's coming from in here. It's not because you're initiating it. And that's what a lot of people, like I said, in our society today, don't truly understand in a lot of ways uh, because, you know, you, you see now, it, are there times like if you're a sports, you know, coach, if you're a, a sports team, you know, head coach or something, are there times when you may fire it out? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But let me tell you, if that's your starting point, you're not getting it done. You got to have those conversations that give them a sense of, oh, you know what? We can do this. We can do this. What's keeping you back? Oh, well, golly, be gee, let's let's say nothing. Mm-hmm. Okay, what's it going to take for you to get over that fear? Mm. Put it beside us. There you go. Let's do that. Yeah. You all ready? How are you going to do that? Let's do it for each other. You know. Yeah. And so there there are aspects of where that comes into play when you're talking about challenging situations, but it's a good picture um, that leaders need to have some awareness of sure. at what point are you getting in a way of the real success at what point are you distracting so that the way you're doing that is not leading to where you want to go and and on what basis are those you know emotions happening and if it's just from you kind of trying to fire up their emotions guess what three minutes after they get away from that it could all just go, okay, well, let's go do this now, you know, kind of, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and if you think about that, it's, uh, um, uh, it, it, it's amazing. And, um, uh, and, you know, all that is also true of the, if you think about it, all that is also true of uh, military, you know, engagements, you know, that, that people might have to deal with kind of thing. It's not just about getting everything fired up inside. It's getting a sense of the clarity of it and what's going to make it so that you want to go forward and get there with this. And it's, and that's the part of the brain when it gets clarity on that. And when it truly uh, brings out the, the processing, the awareness, it sees it. It also sees what some of the strict, the, you know, uh, resistances might be some of the unexpected factors mm-hmm. and and you know what can we get past that yeah how are we going to get past that oh wow yeah you know what and they come up with something within their brain that makes them sense that yeah you know what let's do this let's do this and um and when they get all of that is really getting the processing in the brain going so that their clarity is there. It's not just about firing up their emotions that, mm-hmm. that, um, uh, and, and somehow uh, making that the focus of it all. And that's what a lot of people in our world don't fully understand because there are, you know, a lot of movies and stuff. You just see somebody yelling and firing people up, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Well, guess what? <laughs> you may be putting their brain in the trash can and saying, okay, you just do this, you do this and, and it'll be, and it'll work. Well, guess what? May not. Are they going to be aware of when something isn't going just where they thought it would? And, um, and one of the, one of the uh, uh, challenging things that you see sometimes with people today is that they, they say that because the emotions were generated up, mm-hmm. that it should get there. And if it doesn't get there, they just point fingers and blame something. Well, this should have been like this. Well, it wasn't. Sorry, it wasn't, you know, kind of thing. And so all of that aspect of it, when you get people that seem to be simply fired up on generating the emotions in people, they're dysfunctional. And you see that a lot around our society and stuff. 
because they're they don't understand the true aspect of leadership on this uh, there's a true aspect of of really getting their processing to understand and to get some vision and clarity on what might the factors be that come on scene that you didn't expect do you have what it takes to handle that yes yeah, not just through emotions it's through how are you going to do it mm-hmm. if it comes on scene are you going to kind of tweak the pathway this way and back you're going to go over it you're going to fight it what are you going to do you know kind of thing and when people start to get a sense that you know what yeah we can do this then your brain generates some good feeling and some emotions and your belief in the uh, success of it and fire fires up a little bit of a a norepinephrine to uh, to fight the the journey if you need to and go um but it, uh, but it's not just from generating the emotions from the outside, so that I can just control. Nine times out of ten, if somebody's doing nothing but generating emotions externally to their folks, mm-hmm. nine times out of ten, they're just trying to play, and and they may not even realize this. I, I'm not accusing or anybody or whatever, but nine times out of ten, they're just playing control freak games because you know what? If their team, if, if somebody is going into wrote emotions guess what they're not processing the truth of the situations anymore and you're kind of disconnecting them from that but that is what you want to gain the real success and if you see some emotions coming up uh and in fact one t- I, I shared this in a previous show a while back but uh, uh i think i shared uh when you were the host there, Jill, but the, 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 the team that, uh, that I was the site manager for at Griffiths Air Force Base, um, because of some things we were talking about in a meeting, they really caught a vision for, wow, and they started putting some things together, and I'm the boss up there. I can sort of hear what they're going, where they're going, but in my mind, I'm going, yep, you know what? And one of the guys actually picked up a pen and a pad and went over and sat down and he was going to draw some notes on on some things to to go for and stuff but just before he sat down he realized that his boss was standing there and he looked and he looked at me he froze and he looked at me and all i did i looked at him i winked and i nodded and he sat down with a smile on his face and started writing some notes of different ways that they they could do things and stuff and so it, it it's just one picture that i allowed the discussion that we had that engendered their processing in their brain to come up with a couple of things that made them feel oh yeah yeah you know kind of thing and they started coming up with some uh, thoughts on it and um you just got to realize that when you're talking about the dysfunctional part of it is when you're trying to just create the emotions from the external while you're there. Uh, and nine times out of 10, if that's where somebody is focusing on, they have a tendency to just be focused on trying to play a control freak game. Cause guess what? If you go into rote, you know, emotions, your brain is probably not involved so much um, because it's sort of external they're just doing something now their brain may have a thought on it or two but it, it it probably doesn't have the processing going on where it can have a sense of how they're going to overcome you know restrictions how they're going to overcome this that how they're going to really get there in in a challenging situation or whatever and all of that and so it's just sort of interesting that there's a lot of people in our society and and, and i think we've all seen this a couple of times at least that you have people like when they're talking, you'll have people, you know, when they're trying to get a message across, right? <laughs> yeah. And every, and I everybody, write. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. And everybody down there is going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? When they leave the room, they're not going, yeah, 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 anymore. You know, the bottom line is that's all external. The idea is when you're creating the insights in the, the people so that their brain can process the truth of it yeah. and, and the awareness of it, their brain can, can then generate some emotions here that help them really um, uh, be aligned with kind of what they're hoping for. And so it's just something to think about when you're talking about this aspect and it brings us a certain neuroscience aspect to it and it, and it bring some leadership to it it's it's one area that um that people that you see 
uh, in a lot of places today need to think about. Emotions is not about you creating them in the person. No, it's about them processing and them gaining the clearance within their brain and them gaining a sense where they have sort of a picture in their mind of the experience of it and they start building the emotions, not you doing it for them. And that's uh, that's just a key aspect that so many people today uh, don't truly understand. But it's a key aspect of leadership, and it's a key aspect about what you're thinking about when you look at neuroscience and its application to it. And also, just from a leadership standpoint, that aspect about the emotions and stuff and, and how that needs to be at play is uh, – is a key factor in it. Wow. Wow. And it just keeps coming. <laughs> Your brain is like, does it ever rest? I mean, you know, I'm following you. I listen to you. I'm just like, I always see new, new horizons, new things you're talking about. And you're teaching me, you know, just little me, a lot about well, leadership. Well, I appreciate that. that. <laughs> no, but it blows my mind how there's always something different that you're able to talk about. I got goosebumps. It's like you... Darn, you were have a way with words, but um, and neuroscience well, well, now too. What, the, but these, <laughs> these are some in, these are some insights that yeah. you know, from my experience, and I've been very fortunate. Like I said, back in the military, I was very fortunate to have served with some of the uh, most amazing, truly leading uh, commanders and people that uh, that I served with. I mentioned some names before, but I just uh, I've learned so much about leadership, not from books, but from experiences and things that I did read about the neuroscience and all that, my brain can go back to events that I saw and I go, oh, yeah, that's true. Yep, there was an example kind of thing. And so, yeah, it it's uh, – but these are some key aspects when you talk about leadership and leading your teams, particularly in a, a you know ch- challenging environment or whatever, that it's not just about, you know, uh, emotions. If you fire them up externally in the way so many people think they're supposed to guess what you took their brain and just throw it in the dumpster mm-hmm. and you know because they're just going whoa, 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 whoa. he said whoa, whoa, whoa. well guess what maybe it isn't you know guess what the th- the factors that come on scene may not be as clear as you thought yeah and so all those are just key aspects that that, that i bring and, and thank you for saying what you did i'm always i'm always honored to be here with you and stuff too so oh, wow. uh, cool honored just, for me yeah, honored to amazing. have you i mean yeah. <laughs> is there anything in your life that you have yet to accomplish that you i mean come on now author i mean your career is there something lacking in your own life just curious because to me you you're like this but we're all not perfect there has to be something that you're still after to achieve now right you don't have to stop yep well i'm still working on my phd i've i've made some changes on on how i'm doing it so i'm still looking to to get that uh completed but really right up until i take my last breath my goal is to (laughs) Uh, bring freedom to potential to other people with insights and and uh, you know how often I can stay on this show and, and also with my two great grandkids you know kind of thing you know leaving uh, insights with them because one of them one of them uh, the the girl just turned 14 and she's uh, within two years of getting her driver's license and it's like wow kind of thing you know but uh, but for them I love them totally and I'm never going to put them aside and and you know, for me, right up until I take my last breath, my entire goal is just bringing freedom to people, bringing awareness to people that maybe they didn't see before. Mm-hmm. Uh, not not to necessarily call attention to myself or anything like that, no, but that it can maybe change their life in a unique way that just makes them think later that it was like, oh, wow, yeah, kind of thing. <laughs> and so that's, that's my goal. Oh, my goodness. Well, thank you for being here. Uh, We need to wrap up in our last two minutes together. Cool. Well, I'll tell you what, it's always an honor to be with you, Jill. I'm I'm always pleased to be here and and chat with you. Same here. And if we want to reach out to work with you to pick up a copy of your book, tell us how. Uh, easiest way to do it, good point. Easiest way to do it, you can go to coachingforrelevance.com, my website. Site. And one of the things that they did, you go to the home page on it, you know, when you first click on it. And one of the things they did is, is they put a banner for my autobiography on it. And um, 
a couple of seconds after you click onto the website, that banner comes up and you can click on the little X at the upper uh, top right of the banner and it'll go away. Or you just scroll down about that far and there's a little thing that you that clicks on it says you can get your copy and you click on it and it takes you right to the Amazon page where you can purchase it. So it's uh, uh, makes it the easiest way is to go right to my website and see what the uh, uh, the banner, you know, like I said, a couple of seconds or so after you get on the website, web homepage, mm -hmm. uh, the banner comes up and, and uh, you'll recognize it and stuff. So, yeah, if somebody wants to, they can do that and just go down kind of to the bottom of the banner and there's a little button that you, it says you can get your copy and you click on it and it takes you right to the Amazon page where you can purchase it. So and I'd, I'd welcome people to get it. And a lot of what you're talking about, uh, I will say this, that a lot of what you're talking about, and I appreciate your comments, uh, Jill, but uh, a lot of what you're talking about was developed in me because of my journey and because of mistakes that I made, but mm -hmm. also things that I learned from things that I saw in some of those incredible leaders with whom I served. Yeah. Uh, and, and a lot of that stuff is, is where a lot of this comes out. So I, I would, I would love, I would welcome people to go uh, uh, purchase the book and read it and stuff like that. And so, yeah, it's, uh, uh, I've been told that I have a story that needs to be told. Aww. And, uh, and uh, so that's, that's why I'm there, but yeah, it's uh, well worth it, but they can go on my website that this is the easiest way to get there. Go on my website and there's a little, um, uh, uh, you know, a uh, little panel thing that comes up <laughs> in the middle of it yeah yeah you, you see the home page behind it Thank but you. then you just go to the bottom and click on it and when you click on it it takes you right to the amazon page where you can purchase it so if anybody would like to i'd totally welcome them to do that thank you again for being here randy have a fantastic day pleasure having you as always amazing stories amazing insight and uh wow didn't know this was going to lead today but eye-opening as always love you randy <laughs> you have a great one okay and well, i'll tell you uh, what i love working with you too and i hope you have an incredible and afternoon. i love working with you and i love you as a person you're awesome I'm so glad that we're friends and um hopefully in person friends one day if it doesn't matter we still connected this way like this is how well, we I'll connect what, it's all virtual what there you go and you know what if we ever end up in the same place and can have a cup of coffee together or something hey there you go <laughs> deal thank you so much bye-bye take care <laughs> Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. Oh. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... ...could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council.